Are you tired of watching your kids get hemmed up on the sideline because they think that they're social media gods? Tired of seeing your kids attempt these Twitter releases that we just can't seem to shake thanks to social media? What's up, y'all? My name's Coach T-Mac. Welcome to the Coach's Corner. Today, we're talking about the easiest, most efficient way to get off the line against press man. It's time to get back to the basics. Welcome to the Coach's Corner. It parts like the Red Sea. Nobody touches them. No, it's, it's like when, when you hear that you made the 105, it's like Christmas morning. But my, if the ball comes in the B gap, i got to make that play. Right? So not everybody starts at ground zero equally. So as we move forward, talking about releases first, a good friend of mine had a chance to spend some time in the off season for some uh, draft preparation uh, with Dante Hall. This is the X factor, the human joystick. He is one of the most quick twitchy guys that the NFL has probably ever seen. Um, And he put my buddy through a drill and he said, all right, we're going to time your get offs. And what he was describing was, I want to see how long it takes you to go from point A to point B against all types of man coverage, tight press, off man. What is your release get off time? And what was quickly realized going through this drill is that um, there was time being wasted. And my buddy, the receiver, can't you can't get that time back. So we talk about the the value of timing with a lot of the routes within the air raid or passing games in general. Um, and our kids don't really understand what that means. Um, and so what I believe in is condensing it to a one step. Dante Hall told my buddy, he said, you know, you get one move, you get one step, that's it. Commit to it, live and die by it and go. Cause you don't have time. Um, and most high school coaches, we're not blessed with receiving cores that are going out there with a bunch of guys that are sub four, six, much less sub four, five. We're lucky if we have one of those guys. Right. Um, and so being technically sound, right. It allows our kids to start to be athletically efficient. Now, when I say athletically efficient, what does that look like? Well, it plays into understanding what are my God given abilities? What are my God given strengths and how can I use them to get me open in man coverage against something that's off zone, how can I ensure that no matter what the situation is, I'm going to be open? Um, I had a position coach in college that that taught us about releases in poem form. And I, I know a lot of guys have heard a version of this or something similar, if not the exact same thing. Uh, but I think it's very applicable. Um, it It's just simply run at his nose, step on his toes, influence and go by and those 11 words encompass any and every route versus any and every coverage that our kids are going to see every route deserves a release press man off man cover three cover five cover six zero every route deserves a release and in the clips we look at today you're going to really see that in different situations um but i think it's something that kids it gets lost on them right the game's not played in the straight arrows that we draw it in an install or in a playbook um you know there's 11 guys on the other side of the ball whose primary goal is to inflict pain on you and disrupt you from accomplishing your goal of moving the ball down the field um and so those straight lines get moved and uh, shifted around pretty quickly um And so we just need to understand that our guys can't go out there. They can't take all day at the line. They don't have that kind of time and they can't run just because it says run a 10 yard dig. Doesn't mean I have to run directly vertical from the point I start at to the point I break at that. There is, there's some variation in there that I've got to be able to understand and adapt to, uh, to be an effective football player. Um, now when when we talk about different kids and their technique, um, it's got to play into their strengths, right? What are they good at? If I do have a kid that's a straight burner, burner can run past 95% of the kids in our league, then that's what he needs to focus and perfect his craft around. Uh, but 
most of our kids aren't going to do that. So they've got to start to use their football IQ, their savviness. Okay. Maybe their first step, their quick twitch ability. They may not be a four, six guy, but they're, you know, their 10 yard split really isn't bad. They've got to start to use those things. If it's a big body, they got to be physical. If it's a, if it's a small guy, they've got to get skinny. They've got to identify what their strength is and then mold their one step or their one move around that to be effective. And if we really want to start to be effective as we apply these different releases to uh, different coverages, well, we've got to understand who it is that we're going against. Um, so when it comes to technique and releases, we first have to identify triangles. Um, and triangles are essentially the three primary players that can affect or impact your route, whether it be your ability to get to the spot you're supposed to be at or meeting you to that spot to cover you, essentially. Um, and a triangle of defenders, the vast majority of the time, is going to be made up of a corner, a free safety, and either a down safety or an outside backer, kind of like we see right here. Uh, but there are times where you know a slot receiver can quickly identify that if we're running 95, if we're running some sort of over route, well, that backside safety can replace that corner in my triangle. And I've got to be able to identify that. Um, so when we look at it, you know, these are the primary guys that you're talking about. Why would that be influential to my release? Well, if I need to move this guy out of my path, but I also need to maintain a positive zero leverage on the next guy, well, that means that I can't just cross somebody's face and continue. I've got to press, maintain leverage, maintain angles, okay, and continue to step on his toes before I again influence and go by, right? So the, ultimately, it's just understanding the progression of who my release is impacting. If I'm out here in a one-on-one -on -one situation, the obvious answer is he's the guy that I have to influence. But if I'm running some sort of over route, I know that I've got to leverage myself into a positive situation on level one, but maintaining that zero point on level two, so I can, can hold on to that idea that I can still have a two way go against him. Um, now, once we've identified who those people are, we have to understand what is the most important thing post snap. And for me, our kids have got to understand most important, most valuable piece of your release is your first step. And that first step can be big, it can be small, but it has to be attacking and it has to be aggressive. We can't be timid. We can't be hesitant. We have to make sure that we are moving forward. Okay. Even if you aren't running a post or a fade, you're not pressing vertically down the field. If you're not running anything past five yards, that first step has to continue to be aggressive because we have to create what we call the illusion of speed, that cell of vertical. Okay. That is something that we have to maintain. And when we talk about maintaining that, it's through knee drive, it's through attacking, trying to step on toes, it's aggressive in nature. It's not what you see a lot of the times and what we call, what I call the social media releases, um, where guys expose their chest, take four, five, six steps, and then break a kid's ankles and try and shoot the hand or, or cross the field. Uh, because they look really good and they get thousands and thousands of views. But I firmly believe that for every single one of those social media or Twitter releases that we see, there's 73 other clips of a kid trying to do that and getting hemmed up by the DB and pushed under the Gatorade bins out of bounds. Um, because when you expose your chest and you make no attacking movement, you make no vertical movement, uh, the DB has the ability to stay relaxed and be stationary and that's his place of comfort and what we're trying to do is put them in in uncomfortable situations because that's when we can expose them and create the space that we're looking for in man coverage or zone coverage um so like i said every step that a receiver takes it has to gain vertical ground in some capacity and you know if you are over here split out and you've got off coverage well that first step is going to be big it's going to cover a lot of ground but if you're over here 
on the other side and you've got a guy up in your face, that step has to be under control. It has to be compact, but it still has to begin to move vertically. Now, we can also move laterally to manipulate leverage or body position, but it has to make sure to hold on to that vertical attacking uh, piece because if it doesn't, then we're killing the timing of what our quarterback is anticipating when it comes to trying to get us the ball. Um, as I said, the type of release a kid uses needs to be predicated on himself um, and identifying what his strengths are. Um, now, you get one step to sell it, um, and that one step can either come on your first or your second step. Anything after that, again, starts to mess with the timing or the anticipation that a quarterback is going to look for. So you have the ability to either take one step into your, your influence. Okay. Or take a one step vertical and then step to your influence. But anything past that, now we're starting to delay ourselves and we're doing things that are killing our ability to get to our depth point of any break or get into the window that the quarterback's looking to get us the ball. Now, our kids are told on a daily basis that you've got to be comfortable being covered early so you can be open late. And so that's why when you listen to that poem, run at his nose, step on his toes, right? We've got to be tight to that defender whenever we do influence or they, they won't buy it. Or if they do buy it, they're going to have time to recover. Tight is right. That is what they told me. So we have to make sure that we are comfortable being covered earlier, being in tight areas with defensive backs. Um, when a DB does pick up the ball and it's returned for a touchdown, a pick six happens, it's not because the receiver ran a route and the DB was standing right there. It's because they created the illusion of space and they created the illusion of comfort. So either the receiver stopped in that window or the quarterback saw the receiver stop on his route and said, no one's near him and he throws it. So theirs is opposite. They want to create space so that whenever they make a decision, they can be totally aggressive in closing that window and attacking. Right? So we have to be comfortable in the opposite of stepping on their toes and influencing in close quarters because that's how we get them off balance. That's how we get them to react late and we can separate while the ball's in the air. So we've all heard the term stacking. Um, and that's the end of that poem that I've, that I've added. My position coach told me how to stack, but he didn't like to make it rhyme. And I don't know how to make it rhyme, but we have to make sure that once we do go by, we do continue to stack again, because it changes the angle in which the DB is in space. Uh, and angles are a big part of our releases. And they're a big part of the second thing that we're going to talk about when it comes to losing the yard. So we have to make sure that we stack. Uh, no matter what route, a good release becomes a great route whenever you stack. If you win big time outside and you shoot the hand, well, if I just continue to run wide after my release, well, that guy can flip his hips and he can begin to squeeze me to the sideline. But on the flip side of that, if I win big time on a release inside and I don't press back vertical to stack him, then I'm giving away where I'm going. And that's the part we have to hold on to as receivers is we have to hold on to the unknown. We know where we're going and they don't. Once we can stack them after an effective release, then they're in purely chase mode and they have to follow us in a game of tag that they're always going to be second to the reaction. They're always going to be second across that line. So we have to finish that good release to make it a great route by stacking them. And like I said, as you see right here, these are very simplistic primitive drawings, but it's just to reiterate, you only get one step. It can either be on your first or your second once you've killed the cushion, but that's it. So if I'm up here and I'm got, I've got off an off corner in coverage, then I'm going to press this thing as far as tight as I can, and then just win with speed on my release to get back on top, or I can give a subtle outside step of about half my stride length to then create a bigger window to get inside or vice versa, 
right? But I can't do anything more than that. If I do anything more than that, especially in this situation, I've lost my momentum and I'm killing my timing on the quarterback. On the flip side, when you look at a press situation, okay, you have first step or second step. The cushion's already killed because they're pressing. But we know that we're going to attack vertically with those steps and we're going to ensure that when we press, if I have any lateral cell, it has to be on my first or my second step. Then I can go by and get back on top. Okay. So now that we talked about it a little bit, let's get into some clips um, just so we can begin to understand uh, what it is that we're talking about. And full disclosure, everything that you're going to see from me is is primarily going to be Baylor stuff. Played at Baylor. These are the guys that I know. So these are the guys that I can immediately refer to in my brain and say, remember when they did this? That was training tape material. So we put it on the training tape and we use it to talk to coaches about football because that's what we love to do. Uh, so we're looking bottom of the screen. Terrence Williams is a 2012 Holiday Bowl. Um and I'll play it full speed and it's, it's going to seem like a very, you know, you know, just a great release and, and go win. Um, but I want to run it back and now I want to break it down. Um, they'll give us a tighter angle of this next, but I want to break it down so you can really begin to see what it is that's going on. Okay. So right here, we get the zoomed in version. Okay. And I want you to watch, we're going to watch the tight. And then we're going to run it back and watch the wide again, because then you can use the markers on the field to understand what's going on. Okay. So Terrence is going to take two steps. He's going to subtly attack vertical and then influence with an inside to create that window to release outside. Now caveat, Terrence is a great receiver. He was excellent in college and all American, but this is something that can be applied because we're talking about a power five division one receiver that ran a four five, right? He's not world-class speed, but he played aggressive. He played with a lot of physicality and attacking mentality. And so it created space for him whenever he was being pressed or even when they're an off man or they're in, you know, any type of palms look. So first step right here, boom. You'd like to see a little bit more because there's a little bit of a false step there. But he's moving forward, right? He's moving forward. One, two, that's it. And he knows that I know exactly where I'm going. I've created what little space I need when we look at the hips. And now it's just off to the races. You would love to see Terrence squeeze a little bit, right? To really stack this guy back on top but it works out because of field position and where the safety is doesn't really become an issue, but let's run it back to the wide. So you can use the ESPN line and the 20 yard line to really see that he is moving forward. So he's standing on the black first step. So we surpassed the black with our first step. There's our lateral cell. And now we just go in with speed. And that's all it takes. But what the little, the little gray area that a lot of people might mistake is that if this guy was to approach, our receiver has all the way to the tackle's head that he's still technically on the line. So if we need to create the space where that guy can't just reach out and grab us, we can cheat back a little bit. But where this DB is playing and the the confidence that Terrence has in his go routes. He knows that I've just got to move this guy. I've got to get this guy to show me his hand and open his hips a little bit sooner than he wants to. And then we can get out and go. Again, would love to see him squeeze that back on top, but you know, now we're nitpicking on a 60 yard gain. Okay. So we move to the next one. All right. So now we're in off coverage again, Terrence Williams, He's not world-class speed, but he can go out and run a little bit. But I want you to, to watch where he starts. We're two and a half, maybe three yards from the sideline. Okay, this guy's in off coverage. He knows it's going to turn into man. So as he attacks, he's pressing into that cushion. He's not just running straight. He's pressing into the cushion. The cushion doesn't just exist from 
the line of scrimmage to where the DB is. The cushion exists laterally too. They're trying to use whatever they can. My middle field player sideline, they're trying to use whatever they can to help squeeze the field of play and cut and decrease the amount of area that they're having to cover. Well, so I'm going to kill the cushion, not just vertically, which I'm doing with great aggression, but I'm also doing horizontally. So I'm going to go step on his toes, not where his toes are even with, but on his toes. And as I get there, this doesn't look great because we're still four yards away. But he showed his hand right there. He knows that that guy is committing his hips inside. So now, once he tries to make the adjustment, I'm past him. I get back on top. touchdown so we've got to go press to the guy's toes as much as we can and then just that little subtle that little subtle stem talking about a guy that had a lot of success with the post so people were afraid of him taking it across their face using his big frame to go up and get it a lot of fear there so he knows that guy shows his hand too early now he's off balance he's in that uncomfortable situation once you get a guy to zero leverage he's not usually comfortable they want to be a little bit inside or a little bit outside. Once you get them to that zero leverage, now you can give your influence, go by, get back on top, make a play, party on the sideline. Okay. Now we're going to watch this in two different angles. This is the sideline on the field. Again, slightly off man coverage. We're down inside the red zone. So you get a little bit quicker fade. Okay. But when we watch it from this tight sideline angle you're not going to see a lot that goes on you're not going to see very much where you're like oh that's just a good throw and a good catch but then we go to the wide i want you to be able to tell based off of the clip we just watched the difference in what the two clips look like so a little we got a little bit of a head fake right but not much to really write home about we take it back right there and it wasn't even it wasn't even something to cause the guy to turn his hips. It just made his feet die, right? You kill the feet, the body will die. He's he's dead in the water. We've killed his cushion. I mean, you're looking at a yard between between the defender and Terrence. He has no idea what's going to happen next. The ball's already gone, and so we begin to play it accordingly. Totally lost. Last part of that is we're tight right there. We're on top, so he can't squeeze us out. He can't squeeze us to his buddy inside. We're totally on top, so we maintain total control. A little bit of hand fighting, but nothing that to write home to mom about. And a good ball makes this a really easy catch, but we're in a situation right here where our catch radius can be extended in a lot of different directions, and all he can do is react. He can't necessarily be proactive in coverage. So now we take it to the wide right here. And I want you to see the difference. Look at the heavy inside leverage. Okay. These are all different cutups of man, but they're all done in slightly different ways. That's heavy, heavy. We're talking almost a yard and a half, maybe pushing two yards inside. Terrence knows he's back pylon all day. He knows that. So I want you to watch the angle and the aggression in which he kills this cushion. He's not slow playing anything. Guy buzzed his feet, so we kept running. Now that we've gotten the cushion down to about a yard, and we know how this guy's playing his butts inside, he's doing nothing to try and play both cuts. He's selling out for the outside play. Well, now we get more aggressive in our stack because he's given us that window. We get more aggressive in our stack, and now we're in a dominant position. But the angle in which we come off is attacking that vulnerable hip. If he's going to play inside shade right there, well, the vulnerability is the middle in. So we're going to stem to that, boom, get his feet to die, kill the feet so the body dies. 
And now we're in that dominant position to do whatever we want. Look, he has no idea where the ball is. He doesn't know what routes being thrown. He doesn't know if Terrence is running a decoy totally lost. And it's because we get to that dominant finish position of being totally on top. But we also had a good release by killing the cushion, stepping on the toes, getting inside of that inside leverage to the point where we're not just stuttering and running straight where he can squeeze us to the sideline, play us and the ball. We're forcing him to make a decision at what are you going to look at the ball or us again, dominant position right there, go up, make a play. Now here's a really good one because we don't even complete this ball and we're going to watch it from a wide and then we're going to watch it from a tight as well. So we got in the slot bottom of the screen, Look at that. That is, that is an aggressive quick jam technique right there. What has Terrence done? Blue lines, the line of scrimmage. Terrence cheats back a little bit, says, I see what you're going for. I'm not going to allow it. So he cheats back, uses the rules into his favor, but still he knows he's got one step, one step to go in. That's it right there. When I take that one step, he missed. Get skinny. Now he's all he can do is hold me. Draw the flag. We move on. So let's watch it from the end zone. Same thing. Same play. But right here. Again, a little bit of a false step, but he doesn't sell out for a multitude of steps. He takes one. And look right there. He's already pressing vertical with that shoulder. Right there. Now, a, an average receiver, an average high school player is going to carry this straight at that angle that he's on right there. Why would he carry it on that angle? Because look at the middle of the field. Coach, there's nobody over there. You're right. There is nobody over there. But even if that guy misses pressing you, if he knows that he's faster than you, he's going to run to that hip because he's in space early and he's going to close it late, time it up. So what Terrence does. What Terrence does is he presses that thing vertical right now. Boom. Get back vertical. Press, press, press. See how uncomfortable that guy, that DB is in space or in tight quarters. I mean, Terrence is totally calm. He's got the leverage position. He knows where he's going. He knows where the ball is going to be thrown. That guy is in tight coverage, but he's in chase mode because he's being pressed to an outside situation that he doesn't want to be in. He went for the quick jam. He lost. And now he's just trying to chase. He would rather Terrence just run straight away because he can run with him, dive, knock the ball away. But once you press this thing back vertical, lean back into that guy, now we can begin to create the space with our break. Now, arms get grabbed. Obvious PI. We'll take the penalty first and goal at the two. All right. Now, these last two, we're going to watch... Same situation. This is very similar to what we saw in one of the West Virginia clips. It's quarters that turns into man. Straight go route. Now, looks like nothing. Looks like nothing. But again, Terrence is starting two yards from the sideline. This guy's about three and a half to four. So when we come off the ball, we're going to press at that angle as we kill the cushion. We're going to go run on his toe, run on his nose, step on his toes. We don't even need to influence because the fear that is created right there. As his hips come up, we know that we've won because he's in an uncomfortable position because he's being forced to make a decision sooner than he wants to. It all comes from the aggression. Look at how fast Terrence comes off the ball again. That little that little head nod short arm right there that can be considered your influence. But he never comes out of attack mode. That's what gives us the ability to run by people. Okay, now we just saw that. Guys playing heavy inside leverage. We press to that outside shoulder, killing the cushion, but killing it in a lateral sense because we're going to vertical stem with our release. We're going to kill that cushion so we can step directly on his toes as we influence and go by. So we've just done that. Now, next series, we're going to come out isolated situation we know what's coming but now watch how the guy plays it 
Now he tries to guess. We're taking the same attack angle. Moving at the same angle. We're going to press this thing vertically. Boom, 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 boom. He tries to open early because he's worried about getting run past again. But he's in a zero leverage position. We've taken his inside leverage. We've attacked to run on his toes or run at his nose and step on his toes. We force his hand and then we can make him wrong. Now you've called the same play, thrown two different, thrown the ball twice to the same person, and it's looked completely different. And then last one right here, little offsides jumping. Same thing, different player for the defense, but we're doing the same thing. Attack, attack, attack. Go win. But the the big thing, the overarching theme of all of these is that we are pushing and attacking vertically right now. There's no hesitation. There's no skip step. The few times that we saw some sort of press coverage, we're still taking one step with a dominant attacking aggressive mentality, getting back onto our route, pressing vertical, stacking, and then making a decision. Wow.